Hi, I'm Mark from the Gently Grown Homestead, and today we're going to give a update on what's been going on on our homestead um, that is coming right up. So this is the what's left of the 40 yards of compost, organic compost that I had delivered. Um, there is still a good amount and it does compact easy. Yes. So where the tractor, where the tractor was driving on, you can see there's still a good amount of compost there that you can get with a shovel that we're doing right now. Um, but most of it was emptied back to the field back here. So this is um, where the rows are going for the vegetables. You can see all the way in back, uh, the tractor brought all the logs that were still down from the fall when we cut them down. My plan was to mill them um, and use them to build uh, things like the coop, the greenhouse. Uh, but it is April. There is, there's a time for planning and there's a time for doing and now we just have to do. So the, the logs are in back. Um, this area, the tarp was on it. We took it off. The tractor cut up the sod and added the organic compost. And good compost. Um, and then cut in a little bit just to mix it up too, so it wasn't too compact. I'll still have to go um, each row, and I'll have to prep each row because I didn't put down um, things like uh, I'm going to put down azomite and kelp meal. Uh, the azomite will uh, mineralize the soil. This is really sandy soil. That's why the, I left the compost on top. I'm hoping to hold uh, hold uh, water retention. Sorry, increase my water retention and uh, nutrients available as much as possible. <clears throat> so the azomite led the minerals, compost adds nutrients, hopefully holds uh, a lot of moisture, so you don't have to water as much. Um, but this field is, this is, I mean, this is prepped. Again, each row I'll prep individually and really smooth it out. You can tell maybe, you know, there's, there's some bumps it's compact where the tractor was driving around, all those things, but um, I'll rake it out. I'll add my amendments. Um, I will smooth it out with uh, my rake. And all this dirt here will be growing vegetables very, very soon, um, starting over on the side. So over on the side here, this is where I started the garlic, which, by the way, as an update here, let's go. It is... It is coming through the mulch without me pulling back anything um, without without anything but adding just more mulch on top really you can see oh here's a good patch in the middle here the shoots are just starting to come up um, through the mulch it looks like a pretty good germination rate again if you look down the middle with me here Pretty good. I'm not giving up on, on bare spots either. Although I do know, I do know we lost some, some of the cloves to critters early on. I don't think I had enough mulch down. Um, I saw some some digging um, uh, from something that got to them. Uh, but I'm very happy with this. Again, all I did there was a whole video on it. Um, but the again the basic principle is. You just throw a bunch of wood chips or some kind of mulch on top of the garlic cloves and they grow. I'm gonna do the same thing if I hop over. I'll go into the row. Uh, the same thing right next to it. This is gonna be potatoes. And this is part of the prepped area. It's the very outer edge of the prepped area. Um, I had uh, I had him go right next to the garlic. We'll have, that's more than a 10 inch walkway, but little bit of a walkway here and then I added compost again and uh, tore this just 
I don't know, just to give the, the potatoes a little bit of a head start advantage, the theory is solid that you don't have to do this at all. You just add mulch like the garlic on top of the sod or on top of the potatoes on top of the sod and it will grow through the mulch. It'll kill the sod and add nutrients as the organic matter breaks down. Um, so we're gonna do a 50 foot row of potatoes. I just got my, my seed potatoes in the mail yesterday. Um, yesterday, I think, or the, maybe the day before, I don't know. These are already blending together. Um, so we'll be doing that very, very soon. And then even uh, one more row over, I will uh, kind of etch out with mulch. We're gonna do sweet potatoes uh, with the Ruth Stout method, this is called, where you just add a bunch of mulch on top um, and you grow you grow vegetables, anything in it that you want. Um, anyway, the potatoes are coming soon. The sweet potatoes will come uh, you know, once uh, once the warmer weather hits, end of May or so. But this will be on the end, just all Ruth Stout method, which is a Connecticut native, by the way. Ruth Stout uh, was a Connecticut native with this method. Bunch of mulch here, and then two rows here. The rest of this, come back with me, will be, there'll be a lot of um, lettuce, greens, salad mix. Uh, we'll do some tomatoes, of course, cucumbers, we'll have some. Um, uh, but we are gonna fill this by the end of the season and even over winter, the plan is to have root vegetables uh, going through, through uh, well, all parts of the year, but the winter especially with some cover. Greenhouses are super expensive right now, uh, kind of like everything, uh, but we're gonna get at least these, uh, these things called poly low tunnels. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a, a small lower greenhouse. Um, put plastic over and it only goes maybe four feet high so you can't walk through it, but it covers the crops. That's how you can overwinter things for, um, for cheaper than a whole big on greenhouse. So this will be, this at least parts of this will be in production all year round. Um, the garlic already, you know, grew through, through the winter as it does, but the pie low tunnels will let us have things like carrots, beets, um, uh, maybe uh, some radishes uh, through the winter and even harvesting through the winter uh, all the way into the spring for the next year. So that'll be really cool. You can also see in back of me the, uh, the pile of wood chips here. <laughs> My daughter's running around having fun. Uh, the pile of wood chips back here became uh, covered by some of the topsoil and sod that was cut up. And uh, from here and from in the front that I'll show you, uh, that is just fine for me. I can still get to wood chips. Um, now I have, that'll be some quick, easy compost. That sod will die down, feed the soil that much more nutrients. Um, worms are, I'm sure, already going at it. So <laughs> that's going to be um, a good, easy way to, to start a big compost pile. So I'm still eyeing a site for my chicken coop, believe it or not. Um, but I'm glad I waited because it turns out one of the neighbors has a bunch of untreated wood that I can use to build it. Uh, there goes my helper. <laughs> this has been my super big helper on <laughs> everything that I do. She was just helping me shovel compost into the wheelbarrow very happily um, all on her own. Now she's on the slide. She's having fun out here. We're, we're, we're outside a lot more than, uh, I mean, probably ever already. It's because we have to be. Anyway, so the coop, um, I'm eyeing this area here. I just, I just have to be careful. They kick up a lot, lot, lot of dust. Um, I don't want them going into the crops or into uh, other things I might have around here, let's say. Um, but this is, this is the area Part of this I'll use for the chicken coop, and part um, I'll use to, uh, I ca I'm calling it free range my kids. Uh, we're gonna have, uh, she's on the slide right now, a slide, trampoline, there might be some other things coming up for uh, my oldest's birthday. Um, but this will be kind of the open area we're not gonna do more than we have to with. And then in back of the barn here, 
Um, this is this is where I am planning the greenhouse. Right through the winter, I'll get the south sun uh, beaming in, so we can hopefully do microgreens all year in uh, a greenhouse right next to the barn. Um, in a perfect world, or eventually, or the master plan, whatever you want to call it, uh, it'll be a passive solar or geothermal, which means the 55 degrees below, uh, what is it, six or eight feet below the earth, you, um, you vent up, so it cools it in the summertime and it heats it in the wintertime. Um, it is, is quite a project to, to do that. Um, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to do that this year, uh, but certainly sometime in the future. <laughs> so this is the front uh, where we planted the apple tree and the mulberries, which again seem to have survived the winter. Um, they are bendy. This is our fruit patch, our orchard. All in the front. Um, this I, I just had because it was so close to the trees. We already planted the trees. The tractor couldn't come in. <laughs> oh, careful! Oh. Because it was so close to the trees, the tractor couldn't come and cut up all this sod. So I just had um, Dave come by and dump some mulch and some compost. Uh, I, just, I did a video on double digging, which is what I'm doing. It's, it's basically just, well, it's cutting up the sod and then turning it over upside down so the sod dies and you have soil to plant on immediately, uh, pretty much. Over here, we were able to work all the land. Um, the tractor came in, cut all the sod, added some compost and a ton of mulch. Uh, perfect for the fruits and berries that stay here. I'll be able to basically just dig down, plant uh, raspberry, currant, gooseberry, whatever I'm getting into the ground and just put the mulch back over. This is, um, this is prepped. This is a uh, this is good. This is a big area too. We'll be able to fit a lot of plants in. We'll have uh, a grapevine running along here. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else we got on this spot right now. We're planning for a cherry tree and another apple tree. But I'm looking for um, an organic pink lady dwarf for the apple tree. And I'm looking for um, a self-pollinating, a Stella ch organic dwarf cherry tree, uh, which aren't easy to find. So I'm keeping an eye out, but I think they're gonna have to wait until next season. We have plenty to plant here anyway. Um, I'm really excited that this got done over the weekend. I almost forgot to mention that we did decide to start seeds indoors. And here's the kale going up. It's coming along, this is a little laggy. It's uh, I should probably move this actually to the other shelf with the closer lights. Um, it was coming along pretty well. I just didn't want to be, didn't want to be far behind in the season. Uh, some things, again, like celery, you really can't direct seed celery in our climate. Um, it just, it won't be worth it if it even works. Um, same for kale, by the time, if you direct seed it, by the time it, um, matures, the aphids will get it, you know, in, uh, by the end of July, so, and of course my, my potted herbs I keep down here, dill, oregano, rosemary, parsley, thyme, sage, and this one, I think that's it. All right. <laughs> And that is pretty much it for now. Um, we uh, will have a lot more updates coming very soon now that the season is going. Uh, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new videos from the Gently Grown Homestead. Thanks. Be well and grow.